Chapter Two: A Handsome Stranger. The Dashwood sisters were finally beginning to feel comfortable at Barton Cottage. They enjoyed taking walks and practicing music for the first time since their father died. They didn't have many visitors, and there were few other houses within walking distance. The only nearby place was a large mansion, Allenham, a mile away. They heard the owner was an old lady named Mrs. Smith, who wasn't well enough to have visitors. One day, despite Eleanor's warning of rain, Marianne and Margaret walked up a hill behind the cottage. At the top, they were delighted at the blue sky and white clouds. They laughed as the wind blew their hair, and Marianne cried, "This is the greatest place in the world!" But within minutes, dark clouds rolled in and rain poured down. The girls ran down the hill as fast as they could. Margaret was ahead and didn't see Marianne slip and fall. At this time, a gentleman out hunting saw her accident and ran to help her. Her ankle was twisted, so she couldn't stand. The gentleman carried her to Barton Cottage. There, he placed her on the sofa. Eleanor and her mother were shocked when the stranger entered the house carrying Marianne. They both noticed his handsome appearance. He apologized for a rude entrance, and Mrs. Dashwood expressed her gratitude for his helping Marianne. She asked his name. It was Willoughby. He presently lived at Allenham. He said he would visit them tomorrow to check on Marianne. Mrs. Dashwood said he would always be welcome at the cottage. Then he left into the pouring rain. Eleanor and her mother admired the man, but Marianne had barely seen him due to her condition. She imagined her hero so intensely that she didn't feel the pain of her injured ankle. When Sir John visited them, he was asked if he knew Willoughby of Allenham. Willoughby, of course! He exclaimed. He visits us every year. I shall invite him to dinner on Thursday. What sort of man is he? Asked Mrs. Dashwood. He's a good man. He shoots well, and he's the best horseman in England. They demanded more personal details. Sir John told them Willoughby had no house in Devonshire. He stayed with his relative, Mrs. Smith, at Allenham when he visited. He also said Willoughby would probably inherit the old lady's fortune. Marianne's rescuer visited the next morning. Willoughby became very comfortable with the Dashwoods. The fire in Marianne's eyes seemed to draw him in. They shared many interests and spoke without shyness. By the end of his visit, they talked like old friends. Willoughby visited Barton Cottage every day afterward. At first, he pretended to worry about Marianne's health, but he soon stopped pretending and openly enjoyed Marianne's company. They read and sang and talked together. Marianne thought Willoughby possessed all of the sensibility and taste Edward Ferrars lacked. Soon after, she came to believe that he was perfect for her. Willoughby seemed to feel the same way. Mrs. Dashwood secretly congratulated herself on a great future son-in-law. Meanwhile, Eleanor began to pity Colonel Brandon, who couldn't compete for Marianne's affection with a young man of twenty-five. It bothered Eleanor that Marianne and Willoughby took pleasure in laughing at Brandon. Eleanor was not as happy. She found no companion to take her mind away from missing her friends in Sussex. The only person she could talk to was Colonel Brandon. Who liked talking about Marianne? I see your sister is not fond of second attachments," said Brandon. All of her opinions are romantic. She believes we only fall in love once in our lives. I hope she'll become more sensible. That may happen," continued Brandon. "I knew a young lady once who." He suddenly stopped, thinking he had said too much. Eleanor felt sure that his story was of disappointed love. Her pity for him grew. The next day, Margaret said to Eleanor, "I have a secret. Last night, I saw Willoughby begging Marianne for a lock of hair. She cut it off and gave it to him. He kissed it and put it in his pocket." Eleanor guessed they were now secretly engaged. 
She was surprised they had not told anybody. The following day, Sir John planned a trip for everyone to a house called Whitwell, owned by Colonel Brandon's brother-in-law. A large group of them packed picnic lunches and prepared to leave. But as the people ate breakfast, a letter came for the colonel. He looked at it and explained to the group that he had urgent business. Their excursion was cancelled. They tried to convince him to put off his business, but he wouldn't. After Brandon left, they decided to ride around the countryside. Marianne got into Willoughby's carriage, and the two were not seen for the rest of the day. The next morning, Mrs. Dashwood went to visit Lady Middleton with two of her daughters. Marianne stayed home since Willoughby would be coming for a visit. When Mrs. Dashwood and her daughters returned home, they were not surprised to find Willoughby's carriage in front of the cottage. They went inside and Marianne came rushing out of the sitting room, sobbing uncontrollably. Then she ran upstairs. Mrs. Dashwood asked Willoughby, Is she ill? No. He answered, trying to look cheerful. But I have bad news. My cousin, Mrs. Smith, has sent me to London on business. I won't be able to visit any more. I'm poor and depend on Mrs. Smith. I must do as she asks. I've come to say goodbye. Well, I hope you won't be gone long, said Mrs. Dashwood. I'm afraid I won't be back this year, he replied, his face reddening. Mrs. Dashwood looked at Eleanor with surprise. Eleanor was just shocked. Willoughby said goodbye and rushed out to his carriage. Then he was gone. Eleanor was worried about her sister, whose emotional nature would encourage her misery. Later that day, Mrs. Dashwood told Eleanor that Mrs. Smith probably sent Willoughby away because she disapproved of his engagement to Marianne. He'll return to Barton as soon as he can. Why would they hide their engagement from us? Questioned Eleanor. Dear child, scolded her mother. It is strange for you to accuse Willoughby and Marianne of hiding their feelings. You have accused them of showing their feelings too openly in the past. Do you prefer to believe he has bad intentions toward Marianne rather than good? I hope not, cried Eleanor. I hope there is a simple explanation for his strange behavior this morning. Nobody saw Marianne until dinner. At the table, she was so upset she couldn't eat or look at anyone. And when someone mentioned anything connected with Willoughby, she burst into tears. As the days passed, Marianne got worse and worse. A week later, her sisters persuaded her to go for a walk. While walking, they saw a gentleman riding toward them. It's Willoughby! I know it is! cried Marianne. She ran toward the carriage. It was not Willoughby, but Edward Ferrars, the only person in the world she could forgive for not being Willoughby. She stopped and smiled, holding back her tears. As Edward and Eleanor exchanged greetings, Marianne saw their polite yet distant behavior. When they returned to the cottage, Mrs. Dashwood greeted Edward warmly. So, Edward, what are your mother's plans for you these days? Does she still want you to be a politician? No, replied Edward. She knows I could never do that. We'll never agree on a profession for me. I've always wanted to work for the church, but that's too ordinary for my family. I know you're not ambitious, Edward, said Mrs. Dashwood. No, I wish to be like everybody else, to be perfectly happy in my own way. Greatness won't make me happy. You're right, cried Marianne. What does wealth or greatness have to do with happiness? Greatness has very little to do with it, said Eleanor. But wealth has much to do with it. Eleanor, cried Marianne. Money only gives happiness where there is nothing else to give it. Beyond answering our basic needs, it's of no use at all. How much do you need for your basic needs? asked Eleanor. Two thousand per year, said Marianne. No more than that. Eleanor laughed. <laughs> Two thousand! One thousand a year would be wealthy to me. 
A family cannot live on less than two thousand per year, said Marianne. It takes that much to have enough servants, plus a carriage and horses for riding. Eleanor smiled at her sister's description of her future life with Willoughby. During Edward's visit, Eleanor showed her usual politeness and interest, but she was alarmed by his coldness toward her. He was clearly unhappy, and she doubted whether he still loved her. She could see he was confused. The next day, while having tea, Marianne noticed a ring on Edward's finger. I've never seen that before, Edward. Is that your sister's hair in the ring? Edward blushed deeply and, looking quickly at Eleanor, answered, "Yes, it's Fanny's hair. It looks lighter than it really is." Eleanor was sure that he had taken some of her hair without her knowing.